I was looking online for some kind of a DC motor with a shaft encoder on it and a closed loop controller to use instead of a stepper motor but what I found instead was these uh, closed loop stepper motors also have a shaft encoder and built in electronics and these closed loop stepper motors seem to be fairly common so I guess there must be some advantage of doing it that way instead of just using a DC motor, optical encoder and controller to maintain position. The problem with the conventional stepper motors like that is if you ever perturb them too much and they fall out of sync due to overload then they completely fall out of sync and they have no idea where they are and from then on you're just out of sync. And that means you have to size the motor to handle any sort of overload without ever falling behind and sometimes that means a really big stepper motor. But this closed loop stepper motor is pretty neat because it's got the optical encoder and drive electronics right on the end of the motor which means I can just take that motor and hook it up straight to my Raspberry Pi. This is just some jumpers because I was playing around with the wiring. Whereas with a stepper motor I have the uh, stepper motor driver to go in between to give the current that this thing needs. And now doing that same motion with this closed loop stepper motor if I stop it from turning, it'll just catch up. I can even disturb it while it's stopped and it just goes back to where it's supposed to go. And the digital signal that this one needs is the same as what goes into a stepper motor driver which is pretty lucky because <laughs> there is basically no documentation that came with this motor other than this little table for what to set dip switches to. Now if I just pulse the stepper motor at a constant rate and I have something on here with a bit of inertia like this wooden bar then this is as fast as I can drive it otherwise it'll just lose sync when it tries to start up. So this is trying to run it a little bit faster and it doesn't always stop in the same position because it just loses steps when it's trying to start up. Now if I give it a nice little acceleration and deceleration curve at the start and end I can actually run it a fair bit faster without losing steps. So the tricky thing with a stepper motor is I have to give it essentially a motion curve that can follow exactly and if it can't it just falls out of sync and my positions after that will just be all wrong. Whereas with this closed loop stepper I can just give it a really fast motion curve and it'll follow it as best it can. If it falls behind it just catches up and if it's stopped it'll just deal with that too. And I can tell this one to move way faster. Right now it's moving so fast that it ends up not stopping in time and it actually overshoots a little bit. And the cool thing is dealing with all that in terms of falling behind and catching up again basically the built-in driver handles all that so it'll give it steps that it can follow and just tries to approximate what it was told by my Raspberry Pi computer. So the nice thing is I can just treat that like it was a stepper motor but one that won't fall out of sync. Although if this one falls more than a turn out of sync then it just gives up. There. Now it's more than a turn out of sync and it doesn't try anymore until I power cycle it. And it also has a fault signal that I can send back to the computer saying that I'm out of sync and I give up. Now the holding torque rating for this motor is 0.8 newton meters. That's like a one kilogram weight hanging eight centimeters from the axis. So this screw is only at seven centimeters from the axis, but let's give that a try and see if the motor can move that. And put the motor on and put this on here now. And it has difficulty with it, but it's able to do it. Now the rating for this conventional stepper motor, which is about the same size and weight as my closed loop stepper motor, is only 0.37 newton meters. So I put the screw at 3.5 centimeters from the axis, and let's hang that same weight from it. And it doesn't quite handle it. And of course not only does it not handle it, uh, when it doesn't handle it, it falls completely out of step. Now I just changed the dip switches in the driver here to give this motor 1.5 amperes instead of its rated 1 ampere. 
And now it's able to do that just fine, but it has a tendency to get warm like that because at one and a half amperes, the resistance losses in the internal coils are more than double what they would normally be. And even if when it's not driving a weight, it still has to put one and a half amperes in the coils because it has no idea if it's driving anything or not. Now if I make this one work hard continuously with a weight on it like that, it also has a tendency to get pretty warm. So I think this one just drives its coils much harder than this one because this one only needs to drive its coils harder when it has load on it because it knows if it's falling out of sync or not. So advantages of this closed loop stepper motor is I get more power for the same size package. I seem to be able to run it faster too. It's got built in drive electronics that I don't need a separate driver and I don't have to give it motion curves that I can follow exactly because this motor can just fall behind and catch up a little bit and that's a huge advantage. Because with a conventional stepper motor I have to get the pulses right to within a fraction of a millisecond or I risk falling out of sync whereas with this one if I end up falling 10 milliseconds behind well it'll just be a little bit jerky and it'll catch up which means I don't mess up everything by falling behind a little bit and that's hugely important because to drive this one accurately guaranteed, I pretty much have to drive it with a microcontroller, not a Raspberry Pi, which is not hard real time. It works like 99% of the time driving it from an app here, but I can't count on it. Whereas with this motor, if I pulse it straight from the Raspberry Pi, worst case, if my program gets held up by 10 milliseconds from something else, it just jerks a little bit and catches up again, so no disaster. And to me, not having these hard real-time constraints is a huge advantage because otherwise I have to basically do the stepping on something like a Arduino or a Pi Pico which can handle hard real-time. And that just makes the development so much more annoying because now I have software on here, software on the other thing, I have to make sure the protocol between them is in sync and all that. No worries about that. I can just pulse it straight from even the Python script on my Raspberry Pi and I don't have to worry about some garbage collection or something else getting in between and slowing me down for a few milliseconds. So now I'm curious how well this closed loop stepper motor would do on here instead of this really beefy stepper motor on my strength testing machine. I just have to make a gear for it now. You know every time I make something finicky like this I think I should get a CNC but with these tight inside curves and 18 millimeter depth this would actually be very hard to cut on a CNC machine. And for reference, trying to strength texture with the old stepper on it first. With a conventional stepper, my motor starts skipping a little bit at around 570 kilograms. Let's disengage that stepper motor by taking the gear off of it. Now with the closed loop stepper temporarily fastened in place. Whoops. Ah. It's easy to underestimate just how much force that stepper needs to apply to crank half a ton on that screw. Better temporary motor mounting bracket. Arc. And again, but this time with the gear lubricated with salad bowl finish. Max out at 450 kilograms, so I guess I won't be replacing this big motor with this little one just yet, although that's an impressive showing for a motor this small. Although I did give it a slight advantage, I put a 6 tooth gear on it instead of the uh, 9 tooth on this motor. And that's because I can spin this motor a lot faster. These closed loop steppers have an optoencoder on the back and I'm impressed with how well they continuously compensate for a load. But not all closed loop stepper motors are the same. Some of the cheaper ones, like this one, just have feedback by gluing a magnet to the back of the shaft. And then the magnet sensor on the PCB actually picks that up. And I don't know if these will work that well because some closed loop stepper motors will just add steps at the end of the motion to get back in sync if they lost some. And for larger closed loop stepper motors, this one's a NEMA 34, they do have a separate controller which also connects to the optoencoder on the back. 
And looking for more example photos, I just came across this article right here that explains the different types of closed loop stepper motors. So what I've got here is this type, which does uh, load position control and all that um, using its high res optical encoder. Cheaper ones will just do step loss compensation. That's probably the ones with the magnet on the back of the shaft. And ultimately for a bigger CNC machine, you'd want a servo which can spin much faster and has much more load capacity. But anyways, love these motors and even though they cost quite a bit more than stepper motors, I just ordered a bunch more. But there is something to be said for the simplicity and reliability of old-fashioned steppers. This one I think is about 45 years old.